You know, I love Penang and I love its food in particular, but I have to admit it took me quite a few trips to Penang to actually appreciate why it's considered the street food capital of Malaysia. Uh, on the plus side, it means I've got a lot of footage of all my favorite hawkers that I've accumulated over the years, which we're going to show you now. I hope you enjoy. This episode of Street Food Journeys features How to make wonton mee by Liam Ghani How to cook oyster omelette with yours truly Places of interest in Penang with Shaokani Abbas Mark O.D. on a flying visit to Penang for Cha Kui Diao and more Some of my favourite hawker places in Penang The Tropical Spice Garden and our MOMC chefs and my community members tell us about their favourite Penang food. Award-winning Malaysian tour guide Shaokani Abbas joins me to talk about Penang's destination highlights. Here's what he has to say. Hey Shaokani, good to see you again. Now, Penang, I have been to Penang, but I love your uh, tour guide's perspective on it. So tell us a little bit about it. Well, uh, Jackie, Penang is an island. It's located in the northern region of Peninsula Malaysia. And uh, if you fly there, it takes only one hour, or you drive there, it takes four hours. But you have to go through over the Penang Bridge. Uh, it's, it's an awesome bridge, it's a very long bridge. And uh, Whenever I go there with my group, we always check in. Then the first place we will go, we'll, we'll be visiting is a Penang Hill. Okay, it's around 821 meters above sea level, and uh, a trip you must not miss. Next to the hill, there's a temple. We call it Kek Lok Si Temple, the largest Buddhist temple in Southeast Asia. Right? I have to be there. Yeah, it's huge. It's yeah. like it's, scrolls, it's, like it's crazy. Yeah. Mm. Then Penang, as you know, is a UNESCO heritage site together with Malacca. Uh, the heritage site he should visit too. But before that, he should visit the Chong Fat Zi Mansion. Okay. It represents uh, the best of the 18th and 19th century Chinese architecture. We also call it the Blue Mansion because the facade is indigo in color. As you know, Penang has a lot of clan house, right? So the biggest clan house in Penang is Ku Kung Si. And in the area too, you should go and visit Armenian Street. Yeah. And uh, you're going to find souvenirs, whatever. That's the place. And also, there's a lot of street arts and murals around that area. You should also visit Little India. During, during my, wherever I go there, I love the smell, the, the music, the color of Little India, as if you are in India. It's, it's a very special place there. Okay. And this, okay. Yeah. And uh, a lot of spices too. <laughs> and also uh, along in Little India, there's one street we call the Street of Harmony. All the world religion are there. Thank you so much for this. You know, there's a lot of things to do there. <laughs> I know, a lot of food to eat. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank you okay. so much again, Shaokani. And I'll talk right. to you next week. Bye. Okay, bye-bye. TikTok star and TV presenter Marco D flew to Penang recently to eat char kway teow and oyster omelette. Let's take a look. So I'm in Penang. I have got my kway teow. I'm at Lorong Salamats, apparently one of the best places for char kway teow. I can't believe I've actually flew all the way here just to try kway teow. It looks very good. I'm excited. The lady said it was good. The difference between this kway teow and the one in KL is here we have like the Chinese sausage and also these prawns. Look at those prawns. Alamak, gila, gila, walla way. Look at that prawn. That is a big prawn. In KL, the prawns. Sangat kecil, tapi sini sangat besar. It's a bit less spicy than usual because Matsale cannot handle the spice. Penang kway teow. Here we go. 
Okay, that was worth the fight. That's worth the fight. You know what? Is that charcoal taste? It's just so nice. Like you can taste like the kind of the burning of the kratiel, and I've, I can't wait to try this form. Oh wow. Mmm. Very good. Very good. What I love Kuwaiti Al, right? It's just such a simple dish. You got like cockles, prawns, bean sprouts. Really simple dish. It takes them like five minutes to make, but the combination of all these things are just so magical in your mouth. I would probably say Kuwaiti Al is in my top three Malaysian dishes. Like, seriously, I have it so much. You know, Malaysia is famous for food. You've got to try all these things in different states. I've come here for Kuwait Tiao. I was fully hungry. And it's damn good. Mm -hmm. So I just got back from Penang, I'm in KL now, I'm in my home and I just can't believe I flew all the way to Penang for the food. But you know what, it was so worth it, that crazy owl. Whoa, sadap. That fried oyster, sangat sadap. The hawker stall at Excellent Cafe in Air Itam, Penang, serves my favourite Penang cha kui diao. Here's a peek at the chef in action. Okay. <laughs> In this segment, I show you how to make a popular Penang hawker dish, oyster omelette or or chien at home. All right, in this particular segment, I'm going to show how I make a oyster omelette, the Penang version. There are a few different versions of oyster omelette, but this one is probably closest to the Penang version. And the ingredients are pretty straightforward. I've got some oysters over here. They're fairly large, the ones you might find in an oyster omelette typically might be a bit smaller, but we're in Australia, everything is super sized in Australia. Now, uh, you want eggs, omelette eggs, and you want some garlic, minced garlic, and I've got some garlic chives that I've chopped up, and I've got some coriander that we're going to use to sprinkle over the top. Now, as far as the seasoning, uh, this is probably the most important ingredient or the, the one that might be a little bit, um, you know, not something that you might readily have in your pantry depending on the kind of food that you cook. This is what's called minced preserved radish or choy bo in Cantonese. So, and we've got some pepper and some salt and uh, tapioca starch or potato starch. Okay, tapioca starch is something that you can find easily at Asian grocery stores and what you're going to do is you're going to create a starchy batter out of it. Um, usually in a, a, at hawkers in Penang you might see them use cast iron, big cast iron pans, okay? So we're going to start heating it up. In the meantime, let's make some, uh, some of the starchy batter. So we're going to get 
some of this tapioca starch. We're gonna make uh, mix it with water to turn it into a batter. Okay, so tapioca starch and just cold water, not hot water. And if you're not using a non-stick pan, you would want to grease this with some oil first. Okay, we're going to be using a fair bit of oil, by the way. I'm just gonna add a little bit of salt, just give it a touch of a flavor. And what we're going to do is heating up. You want to drizzle this on here, okay? And remember, like I said, you're going to be using a fair bit of oil in this particular dish, okay? So don't freak out. So here you go. And let's throw in the oil. I prefer to add the oil after I've put in the batter, but you can put it in before, especially if it's non-stick because um, otherwise it will stick, right? But I add the batter in after I put in the oil just so I can swirl the batter around a little bit. Okay, so you're just going to fry this. And then what you want to do, you can throw in your chives now if you like. Crack the eggs in. Just using two eggs here. Just break up the eggs. And don't be shy with the oil. And you actually want to brown the eggs a bit, okay? Just gonna just break up a little space here in the middle. Add more oil. Now, usually when people eat this, they think that the eggs need to be runny. It's not the eggs that are runny, it's the, it's the starchy mixture that gives it that runny, smooth texture in your mouth when you eat it. Okay, so the eggs do actually get quite browned in this dish, okay? Like I said, this is the Penang version, or as close to it as what I make. There are other versions that are crispy, that are completely crispy, which are really nice as well. Okay, so I've just put in the garlic in the middle. Let's uh, add the minced preserved radish. And if you don't have it, don't worry, just leave it out, okay? I'm going to throw in the oysters. You want the oysters to not be overcooked, that's the main thing. Uh, a couple of dashes of fish sauce. You can add soy sauce too if you like. And sprinkle some pepper over it. Now, because of the minced preserved radish being quite salty, you don't want to get too crazy with the oyster uh, with the fish sauce. Okay, I'm just gonna turn off the heat. Throw a little bit more chives here. Give it some more colour. And sprinkle it with some coriander 
and you serve it with some chili sauce. On the side here. Soft, okay. Give it a go, let me know how it turns out. Don't forget the recipes. Uh, if you sign up to malaysianchefs.com slash street food journeys, we'll get the recipes out to you when they're ready. Okay, thanks again. Tosun Cafe is a famous old-school Hainanese kopitiam located in an alleyway in Georgetown. Check out how they make their kaya toast. Hello. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you? Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Watch photo, but then the but then the you 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 Penang born MOMC at heart chef Liam Ghani, who blogs at themuddledpantry.com shows us how to make wonton mi or wonton noodles with chicken char siu. Have a look. Hi, I'm Liam Ghani. I'm here to show you my favorite street food dish from my home state of Penang in Malaysia, wonton mi dry. Oh, it's a classic, it's easy, you're gonna love it. So, we've got our wonton mi noodle flavorings. Very simple, some light soy sauce, sweet soy sauce, so ketchup manis, a little bit of dark soy sauce, some sesame oil, some salt and white pepper, and a little bit of duck fat. If you are making a non-halal version, you can go ahead and use a little bit of pork lard instead. So for our wonton mi toppings, we have some egg noodles, We've got some Chinese chives, or you can use spring onions instead. We have some Chinese greens. In this case, I'm using some bok choy. Uh, of course, we have the char siu. So I'm using a chicken char siu. I've used a chicken thigh, which I've marinated and cooked off in the oven until it's nice and charred. And also an essential condiment, we've got some green pickled chilies. So, for the last part of our noodle dish, the wontons, obviously you need wontons for wonton me. Our fillings, I'm using a bit of ground chicken thighs. Traditionally, you can use some ground pork and you can even mix it in with a little bit of um, prawn meat if you would like to. Some more Chinese chives. Our seasonings, very simple. A little bit of salt and again, a little bit of white pepper. And we've got our wonton wrappers as well. And that's it. I'll be showing you how to make these in a second. Okay, to make our wontons, very simple. We have our filling, our chick ground chicken. We're just, to that, we're just gonna add our salt and our white pepper. There we go. We're just gonna cut up, sli finely slice our chives. Again, we're using garlic chives. There we go. Oh, perfect. Add that to our mix. We're just going to give this a little bit of a blend. Again, very simple. You can make this a lot, you can add a lot of other flavors to this. But for one time me, if you want a authentic hawker store street food version, you wouldn't have a very fancy one time. So let's just get all that in there. Okay. Now, to make our wontons, 
There are a number of different ways you can make a wonton. I'm going to show you my favorite way. What you're going to need is a little bit of water just to moisten the edges. You take your wonton skin, okay? You just get a little bit of your mixture, not too much, but a walnut size piece, about that size. Put it in the center, get your two fingers and just paint the water over. Now, watch carefully. You flip it over so it's a triangle and you push it down. Now, there are a number of ways that you can do this. That would be your most simple wonton. If you wanted to as well, you can pull it over like that and give it a little pinch. Again, keep your fingers a little moist and just fold that back over like that. So for our flavorings, very easy. We've got our serving bowl. We're just gonna add in all our sauces, any order you like. Here we go. Oh. A little bit of duck fat and our salt and white pepper. That's it. Good to go. Okay, so let's cook this. First things, your noodles. Boiling water. In it goes. Two minutes, two minutes, three minutes, done. Whilst that's going, your little wontons that we made earlier. They're gonna go outside the basket. Again, couple of minutes, done. You'll know when they're ready, when they float. I'm back. Right, we're ready, almost ready. Noodles getting nice and soft. Wontons starting to come to the top, floating, which means they're almost ready. So, just let's give our noodles a little bit of a mix. It's gonna pop in our greens quickly. We're just gonna blanch them. Don't wanna overcook them. Okay, let's turn this up a bit. You're ready for this. Okay, so let's just take that out. Ready to serve. You're ready for this. Okay, our noodles, nice and soft, ready. Wontons floating, just quickly blanched our Chinese greens. We're ready to serve it up. Serving up time. Nicely cooked noodles. Don't want to drain them too much. You want a little bit of the cooking liquid to go in it. Awesome. And then a little bit of a ladle. Let's just get a little bit of that cooking juice out just to wet the noodles a bit. Then we're just going to mix that all together. There we are. Then, let's get our nice wontons out. Look at them. Oh, look at those wontons. Just gonna pop those to the side there. Get our lightly blanched greens out. Pop that over there. Check it out, coming together. A sliced char siu. Just gonna pop that over the top. And lastly, our chives. There we go. Get those chives over it. And then our pickled green chilies. They just pop on the side there. How good does this look? Come on. You gotta try it. I ate an amazing mama mee goreng and mee rebus in Burma Road. Here's a look at the hawker cooking his famous mee goreng.
Penang's Tropical Spice Garden runs garden tours, night walks and cooking classes. Catherine Chua takes us on a tour of what's known as Asia's Hidden Eden. Welcome to Tropical Spice Garden. My name is Catherine Chua. And um, here at this project, uh, we've, we've sat on this beautiful piece of land now for 16, 17 years now. And we sit in a natural um, secondary rainforest of over five, walking, five acres of walking trails. So come, let me take you on a little journey through, my, through the gardens. We host um, a whole array of the best of Malaysian food, from Nyonya to Malay to Penang street food. And each guest gets walked through in a very hands-on experience with our panel of very experienced and passionate home chefs. So yeah, so every guest that comes in, they get, they get to enjoy harvesting some of the herbs from the spice gardens and they bring it in and they get to cook with it and just really experience the best of our Malaysian herbs through cooking. We asked some of my Jackie M's Malaysian street food kitchen community members the same question we ask of our MOMC chefs. What dishes do you think of when you think of Penang? Here are their answers. Hi everyone, Penang is a place that I call home and to me, it is the food paradise of Malaysia. It is well known for its ever famous street food and hawker centres and my personal favourites are Cha Kui Tiao, Asam Laksa, Hokkien Mee, Loba, Penang white curry mee, and not forgetting the nasi kanda. Penang is also famous for its Penang nyonya food. This is a must try for anyone visiting Penang and the popular dishes are curry kapitan, asam fish, acha awa, tamarind prawns, otak otak, juhu cha, chai bui, and the peru ikan. And not forgetting desserts. There are many local desserts in Penang but my personal favourite is the Penang chendol. Do give this food a try when you visit Penang. Hi everyone, I'm Chen and I'm from Penang. My favourite Penang dishes are Nyonya Koi's. My earliest memory of them are the Indian traders selling the Nyonya Koi's in a big metal tray that they carry on their head or in a tricycle. Second item would be Asam Laksa thick rice noodle in a spicy fish broth soup with garnishes. Third item, cha kway tiao. It's a stir fry of flat rice noodles and it must have the charred taste and the cockles are important for me as a main ingredient. And finally, jendo. They are shaved ice in brown sugar and coconut milk syrup and it's just a delightful dessert on a hot sunny day. That's all. Bye! Our MOMC chefs Johari Edrus, Rene Jufri and Bob Artnan answer the question, what dishes do you think of when you think of Penang? Penang cuisine reflect the um, Chinese, Nyonya, Malay, Indian and some of those ethnic mix of Malaysia but also some influences of the Thailand because we had just crossed the border. So especially famous for hawker's food and they are normally served as alfresco. So normally are strongly featured like noodles, spices and seafood. Of course, Penang are famous for their nasi kanda. But if you have a chance to eat one local dish on your stay in Penang, may cha kui tiao be it. So it's a truly delicious Penang food uh, specialty. So you may also eat you may also see it written as Cha Kui Tiao and have had time for the tourists to pronounce it. So welcome to Penang. Hi guys, I'm Chef Bob. When I was thinking uh, 
about Penang, definitely nasi kandak sur. Ah, where to get the nasi kandak the nice one? Ah, always I go to nasi kandak berato ataupun nasi kandak lain clear. So another one I like it, uh, char kway teow. I always uh, went to uh, char kway teow at Sungai Dua, char kway teow telur basuh. Nice one, hot sizzling. Meow. Hi all, Rene Johari here. So, I'm going to share with you today a few of my dishes that I can think of when I think about Penang. Okay, so talking about Penang, uh, I've selected a few dishes that I really, really like when I talk about Penang. So, the first will be on my list would be Nasi Kanda. So, Nasi Kanda is a well-known dish uh, for Penang and you must queue for this Nasi Kanda. Alright, so the next will be the Tong Sui. Alright, next on the list will be the Buah Pala or the Pickle Nutmeg. So this is a unique one if you talk about Penang. Alright, then not forgetting the Penang Cha Kui Tiao. Okay, Penang Hokkien Mi also. And then the two types of Rojak that's in Penang. One is the Penang Rojak with the black sauce. And the second one will be the Rojak Pasembo, which is with the peanut red sauce. Then, not forgetting their best ice kacang, alright, in Penang. And not forgetting again, Chendo, Penang Chendo, so in Batu Feringgi. So, please enjoy Penang. So, enjoy my list that I shared. Travel to Penang. Well, as much as we would have loved to include everything we wanted to in this episode, we just could not fit them in. So make sure you sign up at malaysianchefs.com slash streetfoodjourneys and we'll add you to our mailing list and let you know once all the bonus content and the recipes are available for you to access for free. Um, and I'll see you back here next week for Kada. I hope you have a great week. I'm Jackie M.